All right, so let my people go. Let my people go. So I just want to talk to everyone about John chapter 16. Let's just talk about it. So let's see if we can get some people to understand. And let's see if we can bear fruit. All right. So all praise to the Most High. Let's get to it. So in John chapter 16, all of this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. So we're going to stop right there. That's verse 2 of, uh, of uh, John chapter 16 verse 2. And there's a time that's coming where people will think they're doing a service to God. Why would they think that? You know, who can answer that? Right? Why would they think that? You know? Maybe it's because there's a lot of false indoctrination. Maybe that's the reason why, right? People think they got an idea, you know, on who God is. And there must be a lot of false narratives, you know, for someone to go as far as killing someone and they think they're serving God. Wow. And, you know, that also tells you they're not reading, you know, because we know there's a commandment, thou shalt not, right? You already know it, thou shalt not kill. So... So the world got to be pretty messed up place if someone's going to go out of the way and kill you and say, I'm doing it for God. I'm killing you because of God. You know, not, um, it doesn't sound like to me that they're doing it um, out of information that they really read from the Bible. And um, the thing about today, I know that people don't read. I myself was once... Once upon a time was like that. I didn't read. Um, I just kind of just sat in the church and I just let the pastor tell me whatever. And even a certain fellow uh, parishioners that were sitting next to me, they would say stuff that they was brainwashed on too. And, and, uh, and, um, and so, you know, it's just that uh, the thing that we need to do is actually read. We need to read, okay, and we need to study, and we need to, um, especially the commandments, we need to read the commandments, observe them, and uh, break them down, you know, break it down, you know, etymology-wise, you know, gain knowledge on that one commandment, and then move on to the next as you grow and you learn. And, you learn. and you're not going to learn the commandments in one sitting, so... Don't let someone tell you you can't keep the commandments because it's impossible to know them. I know you get a, you get a lot of silly people who would do that. But how long does it take a tree to grow? You know? How long does it take for you to water a tree? It takes weeks, months, and years, right? That's the same thing with the commandments. Weeks, months, and years. And some commandments you can learn in a day. Some commandments you have to observe in a week, through a week. Some commandments takes a year to observe. And some other commandments, it takes years to observe. So, it's important that people understand that you can keep the commandments. But the better word is not keep, it's practice. All right? Um, to give you better insight, Psalms chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorners. But his delight is in the law of Abba Yah. And in his law, doesn't he meditate day and night? He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. His leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. 
For Abba Yah knows the ways of the righteous. So if you go back and you will see that King David was talking about this person who meditates day and night is meditating on the, on the law. And then he goes and compare this person to a tree. Like again, and I said in the beginning of this video, how long does it take a tree to grow? How long does it take a tree to grow? Weeks, months, and years, right? It takes years for a tree to grow, all right? Some commandments you can learn in a day. Some takes a week. Some takes a month. Some takes years. So that being said, so we got to want to know the commandments for it so we don't have to be these people where it says that they would think that they're, that they're doing a service for God uh, for killing you. So if you study the commandments, it becomes your wisdom and understanding. You're not going to kill somebody and think you're doing service for God, you know? They would do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me where are you going. Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Okay, so let's go to where it says that when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong. About sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. So let's just say there, um, people don't, there's a lot of people who don't believe in the Messiah. They just believe in the commandments. And that is a sin because it's written in the commandments that the Messiah will come. And it's pretty evident, you know, that he is the Messiah just from all the things he's done. Now, if someone was to, Let's say you're playing basketball and someone comes, let's say the coach says, man, I'm looking for an all-star basketball player. I know he's got to be out there somewhere. It's got to be someone who's an all-star basketball player, you know? Then someone comes and he's playing basketball. He's, he is... He is complimenting the the whole game. He he and then he goes and tells everybody, hey, I'm a basketball player. And not only that, he says I'm a basketball player, he says, I am the best basketball player you ever had. So he starts to play basketball. People are on the bleachers and people are on the court. And he's shooting up but free throws and he doesn't miss a shot like Michael Jordan. And then you got people who say, nah, he is not a basketball player. You got people who will say that this guy, even though they bear witness to this guy shooting half court shots, full court shots, nothing but nets. And, not on, and, and on top of that, he's actually playing in the game. Complimenting the whole game. He's a benefit to the game. And then he tells you to keep the rules to the game. But then you got people and they say and say he is not who he say he is. They didn't believe in him. That's what they did to the Messiah. And they didn't believe because that it became a sin when they didn't believe. You know, when they didn't choose to believe that he was the king, it became a sin. They, I mean, he's doing everything, complimenting the laws, talking about the father just as everyone else is, 
teaching about the Father, Father this, Father that, and complimenting and speaking well of the Father, glorifying the Father, praising the Father. But there are people who didn't believe that he was a son. This is not the Son of God. This is not a person that you want to believe is of the Father. So it's amazing you have people like that. And to this day, you still got people like that. And you can clearly tell that he is the son of Yah. Thing is, there's a saying, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, then it's a duck. <laughs> so it's the same thing with the Messiah. I mean, he, he, was, he, he was everything that you needed to see that he was of the Father. I mean, he was everything. He was everything you needed You needed to see that he was. He was everything you needed to be. So that's why it's a sin. Because, come on. I mean, like, come on. That's just really sad for someone to go to the extreme and then on top of that die and they, then they proclaim. Then they uh, still say that he's not the son. Amazing. So that's one thing about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. So about the righteousness, right? We know that uh, God's righteousness is his laws. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. His righteousness is the laws, the breastplate of righteousness. It's part of your armor. It's something that you that that you that you that that you represent, and then when you it's like it's like it's, it represents everything about who you are as a person, and it makes you right because this is something that you do. You practice the ways of Yah. You practice His laws. I mean, it makes you a righteous person. You know, it's a, it's a it's a uh, uh, it's important that people know that whenever you practice what is right, you know, it becomes who you are. So. So here is the king practicing righteousness, you know, and no one wanted to see that he was really doing that. He's practicing the law, studying them, and showing others to do the same, you know what I'm saying? Telling everyone, whoever teaches these laws shall be called great in the kingdom of Yah, and whoever teaches, them, or whoever teaches not to teach them shall be called less in the kingdom of Yah. So he's going to the kingdom, and he's going to talk to the Father about all he bear witness to and telling them, hey, Father, you know what? There are some people on the earth who doesn't want to keep your righteousness. And there are those who does. So that's why he had to go. He had to go to the Father and bear witness to the Father and show himself as a witness to everyone on earth. You know what I'm saying? And then the Father will go out and send his decree after the Son has done his job in which he has done. And so now... Everyone who's not keeping the laws is in trouble. Everyone who doesn't believe that the king is the son is in trouble. So, you know, but yes, meditate on the laws is so important. There's prophecy on, you know, people who don't keep the laws. There's a prophecy on that. You know, if you don't keep the laws and you don't take them serious, you don't take the king serious, you don't take the father serious concerning his laws, you are in trouble. And this, the place of torment is where you're going to go. So you, it's just pretty obvious. You're going to get the truth right now. And the king said, uh, he said, why callest me thou good? You know, saying no one is good except for the father. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. So what's the opposite to that, right? Don't let that go over your head. If you want to enter life, come on, you got to keep the commandments. So I'm going to say that again, though, better word is practice, okay? I think there's a mistranslation somewhere in there. It's actually observe the commandments. You got to actually practice them, you know? You got to be someone that practices the commandments, not just keep them. You know, you're not going to be able just to keep something you know nothing of, right? So you got to practice them, observe them, learn them. And then that right there shows that you honor the Father. That's what he needs to see, you honoring him. He needs to see you honor him, honor him, man. And then he will honor you back, okay? All right, so what's the next thing? He says sin and then righteousness. And then he says here where you can see no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. So before the king came, 
uh, there was no condemnation on the devil. The devil was just free reigning and doing all he was doing. And obviously the king had to come down and bear witness to the world, bear witness to the people, and bear witness to Satan and his demons. So, because the father can say, you know, all right, well, I sent my son. I believe my son. I trust my son. If he said you did this, you did this. And that's it. Right? It's like he's sending someone to investigate what's going on on the earth. And pretty much that's what he did. The son came down. He's like, all right, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the father. I'm going to, you know, say, let him know this is what's going on. So pretty much now you got Satan standing condemned. All right? He was, he was judged. He went to the kingdom. And he judged, and now Satan is condemned. And I guess it had to happen in that specific order for him to be condemned in that way. That's why it says it that way. So it had to happen. There, there was a, there was the, there was certain steps that Yah had to do in order for him to condemn Satan. He had to do it in that order. He had to do it in those little steps and orders. Steps, leaps, and bounds. And um, and that's why they say the Father's all righteousness, all righteous. You know, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be glorified. Because he does stuff like that. That's amazing. That's amazing. He didn't just come and condemn Satan. He sent his son first to bear witness to Satan. To bear witness to you being evil. To bear witness to you doing all you've done. He didn't just come and destroy us. He just said, okay, let me send my son down. And I'm going to give grace to people. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give mercy. Whoever, whoever's wanting mercy, whoever's willing to receive mercy, I'm going to give it. And he did it that way. And now, you know, that's amazing. Father God is worthy to be praised. So, so here's Satan. Now he's condemned. And um, anyone that stands with him, do you have the word now? Anyone who stands, anyone who does not repent of their sins stands with Satan. Knowing that Satan is condemned, you are not repenting of your sins. More than likely, you know now that you're condemned. You're condemned as well. So um, I encourage you to know that place of torment is so real. You got to know there's a plethora of videos of people telling you about hell and their little visit there. And I'm telling you right now, I, I believe them all. And I myself went through something too. I didn't personally go to hell, but I think I, I, I did, but came back and not remembered. But I did bear witness to a whole lot of other stuff. And um, it is so, so real. And I encourage you to you who's listening and uh, that won't push that button, that comment. Won't come in. Won't come in alive, but you can come in this live, right? I'm just playing. Just listen, listen though. And then, so I just encourage you to know hell is real though, and watch one video of hell. Watch one, like get like a small five minute video if you can't muster watching stuff like that. Ten minutes if you can deal with it. Fifteen. This video for thirty minutes long, even up to an hour. Invest in your soul and actually watch a video on hell. All right? And then uh, meditate on the laws. And then practice the fruits of the Spirit. All right? Because, to be honest, the reason why everyone is going to hell, because they're not practicing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Man, they're not practicing these things, right? It's so, 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 I mean, I, it's astonishing to me. And I don't know how that's, that went over my head. And but it's, a, it's a good thing I'm starting to read now. And I meditate on the script. I meditate on the laws and stuff like that. And I encourage you to do the same, man. Because you got to study yourself to be approved, all right? But we're going to verse 12 now, verse 12 to uh, 15. Now, the thing is, I, I just want you to know that uh, you, you should really invest in yourself and pray. Prayer is your weapon. It's part of your armor, actually. So put on the full armor of Yah and pray a lot. And your prayer is like, um, 
It's pushing bad thoughts away when you pray. And it's allowing the good stuff to come in and the bad stuff to go out. So prayer does that too. Just so you know that. If you pray enough, you will see it. You can start speaking against thoughts that you have. Start praying and praying and praying. I speak against this, this, that, and the third. Your mouth is powerful. Words, your mouth is powerful. Say stuff that are positive. Say stuff that is encouraging and uplift your spirit. If you wake up in the morning and you're down, you got this depression spirit and it's coming at you, speak against it. Start prophesying against it. And say, you know, day to day, I'm a blessed person. I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman. I'm day to day, I'm blessed. Today will be a good day. And I'm going to, and then anything you can imagine pretty much to say that is good, say it. Because sometimes it manifests in two days, three days, four days, a week, two weeks, a whole month, a whole year. But you will see things manifesting. And of course, you got to do your work. You got to do your spiritual work. And yeah, you'll be able to make good things happen in your life. But it's so important that you know that when you do that, you're able to overcome all kinds of bad feelings and stuff like that. And it'll help you do your will, do your work in the spirit a lot better. You won't be overwhelmed so much, you know, because you understand. Um, so yeah, Satan's condemned and he's judged. And anyone who's walking with him is condemned and judged too. Now, I have verse 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is for me that he will receive what he will make known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So the Holy Spirit will let you know um, what the King is saying, pretty much. So if you hear... The whole, like, say for instance, you actually are in it, you're, you're, you're a believer, and you're praying and stuff like that. And you're getting this um, revelation, or just let's just say you feel like reading the Bible. You're getting a strong sense to doing that, and you feel like you're the Holy Spirit, that's the, that's the king talking to you. Pretty much is what he's saying. The, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to relay my messages to you. And so you need to know that he will be talking to you, which is cool, because... It does, he literally says it. I think it's in John chapter 14. He says, he that believeth on me. You know, I think it's um, yeah, John it's Matthew chapter 14. He said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do, shall he do also. And I think he goes on to say, and I will manifest myself to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I will manifest myself to him. Uh don't quote me. I might be butchering that a little bit. But I know he did say he was mad. When you start believing on him and you start doing his work and you start doing what he did, though, okay? You had to do what the king did. Then he will begin to manifest himself to you. So that's first through the Holy Spirit, of course. And then they say, you know, you're sitting right next to the king. You're like, oh, snap. What's up, king? Okay. Maybe that's a little far. But you never know. It could happen, right? He did it to the disciples after he had died. So why not to you, right? If you believe well enough, why he can't appear before you, right? Why can't he manifest before you, right? I encourage you to meditate on his laws and, the, and practice the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But yeah, so pretty much, let's read that again. But when, but when, but when he, the, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will guide you into all truth. So I read other books other than the Bible now. And I want to tell you right now, it's because of the Holy Spirit. At first, I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I was just this guy sitting in the church. I thought I, was sit I, thought I had the Holy Spirit, but I didn't. And I was just sitting in the church. And I just, it's, it's like I woke up or something, you know? And, and and I'm like, man, there's something wrong here, man. I don't know what's going on. So it that took me years to learn that, though. But it's, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know what uh, it's, it's, it's happening to them when they're in the church. It's like a trance or something. I don't know. But all I know is that 
the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And he literally means that. All truths mean all truths. So you're going to have the Bible, but there's another book that's a part of the Bible. There's other books to read. All right? So you got the book of Enoch. You got the book of Jasher. You got the book of Ezra. You got the book of Maccabees. You got books upon books upon books that you can read that will get you the, the truth that you need. He will guide you into all truth. You got all the books to read that you need to help you better understand this walk. So I'm, it's so important that you, you know that there's more books, man. Don't, don't, don't be fooled, bamboos. The Bible's real. Don't you think that the Bible's not real? It's very real, but it's sort of like, sort of like you part of the army, right? Who isn't really trying to help you? They tell you, hey, come join the army, and they say, hey, uh, before you go, uh, now you're ready to go to war. Here, here's a gun. But and 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 then when you try to shoot it, you're in the middle of battle, and you notice that there's no bullets coming out. It's like, oh, let's just say rubber bullets, and it's not affecting your enemy at all. You're not able to really have good triumphal acts in your life. There's certain things that's just not overcoming, and then you sit in there praying to Jesus. Oh my God, Jesus, 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 this, Jesus, that, and you're not able to overcome, and you're falling apart, and now you're going back to the pastor, and the pastor saying. Are you reading? Uh, uh, no, they don't say no. They won't. They they will not tell you to read. They say, "Are you praying hard enough?" <laughs> they will literally tell you that. You go to a brother and sister. They'll be like, "Are you doing something wrong?" They'll do. They'll do what Job's friend friends did to him. You must be doing something wrong. And then. And you start scratching your head and you think to yourself, if you don't know any better, you're like, you know what? I could be doing something wrong. Let me go home and pray and let me go figure this out. And then come back a year later and you still go through the same thing and you still giving up your, you just gave up a thousand dollar in tithes. You done, you, you, you done lost your wife. You done lost your car. You done lost your house and you still scratch your head about what is going on in your life. You got a gun with no bullets and you getting your butt whooped. That's what's happening. That's what the, that's what, just having a Bible on its own is doing. You know what I'm saying? If you're not reading, that's why the Father said, study yourself to be approved. You got to gain knowledge. There's other books. Read other books. You know? And when you do, you'll see the whole storyline. You don't want to watch a movie just from one segment. You want to read, the, you want to watch the movie from beginning to end. Everything in the middle and to the end. So that's what other books do for you. And we start reading other books. Ah, Eureka, you start making sense to you, and you'll see the storyline. So, 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 so funny how that is. But yeah, um, he will glorify me because it is for me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said to the, that is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So pretty much the king is saying, that's a blessing. That is so amazing and awesome. I love that. Because now I know, even in this Bible study, this is coming from the king. Like, I'm, I'm really cool with the king right now. Man, that is an awesome thing. I'm so happy to be with the king right now. I, I'm being blessed right now. This is the Holy, this is the Holy Spirit, and it's, and it's relaying messages through me from the king himself. Listen, I'm chilling with the king. Okay? If you listen to this message... That's who you're listening to right now, too. The king. I'm not the king. I'm the servant. I'm the servant. But I'm being manifested upon the words of the king. The words of the king. Yeah, that's a blessing. So I encourage you to say... Um, Definitely say that you're a blessed person. Say stuff, good stuff to yourself. Forgive yourself for things you've probably done wrong in your life. Don't beat yourself up either. I don't know who this message is for, but don't beat yourself up. Love yourself, forgive yourself, and just be like, you know what? This, that, and the third may have happened, or, you know, what not. It, it, this reality was what this was, or what not. But I need to be able to overcome, and I can't overcome if I'm feeling guilty all the time. Okay, so you don't allow yourself to feel guilty. Actually, just pray, put on the full armor of Yah, start fighting a good fight. 
Satan's battle is to make you feel guilty every day. Because if you feel guilty, you're not going to stand up. I'm telling you right now, you're not even going to fight if you feel like you're guilty for something. Okay? So, fight a good fight. Put in the full armor of Yah upon you. Okay? And uh, you can do that by gaining, uh, adding the wisdom and understanding. And that's the commandments. Um, you can do that. All right. So, so we know now that the king manifests himself through his Holy Spirit. And I want to add to that before I move to 16 to 20. Uh, I want to add to that. Um, the Holy Spirit gives you the fruits of the Spirit. All right, he tells you to give you context for John chapter 16. He gives you context for that in um, John chapter 15 specifically. And it tells you about the, the, about the fruits that come from him. And you can't have the fruits unless you remain in him. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You can't have the fruits unless you remain in the king. So that's what the Holy Spirit is also doing, what he's also doing, as it says in Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. Um, the disciples' grief will turn to joy. So here we go. Let's read. 16 to 20. Yahushua went on to say, a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more? And then after a little while you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, they kept asking, what does what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Yahushua saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant what I, when I said in a little while? You will see me no more. And then after a little while you will see, you will see me. Virtually I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. So he's pretty much talking about his death. He's like, he's about to die. He knows it. His disciples are like, what's going on, man? Is he, is he, it's like, he's talking in parables again, and we don't know, we don't understand. And so they're scratching their heads. So you pretty much, you get the gist of what's happening here. So he's pretty much telling them that what's about to take place, you know, like, well, hey, man, something's about to go down. And right now, you know, we're chilling and everything, but when it's, when it, whatever's about to go down, you, you guys are going to mourn and you're going to cry. And while you guys are mourning and crying, others are going to be rejoice, rejoicing while you are down, while you getting, while others, while, while you are down, you're going to get kicked while you're down. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to rejoice while you're crying. Okay, maybe not so much in those words, but pretty much though. Because the king knew he was going to die. So that's what that's all about. You know, not too much on that. I'm going to move on to 21 to 24. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. So he's like comforting them. You know, he's like letting them know he's giving them words of comfort. And you can tell that he's thinking ahead of time with these words of comfort. Because they're going to remember all these words, because, you know, the scribes are writing this down. And after he dies, they're going to go back to those words and it's going to give them comfort. You already know that he's, he's comforting them. And he's letting them, know, he's letting them know, hey, man, don't worry about it because, you know, um, what's about to happen is, is, is not entirely a bad thing. It's also what's supposed to happen. And when it does happen, I'm going to be able to uh, give you and bless you guys with all kinds of things that you're asking for. Just ask and it shall be given to you. I want you to know I'm going to be there for you. I'm still going to be around. I got your back. Don't worry. I love you. You're my brothers. I love you. I love you. I love you. All right? 
I love you, I love you, I love you, my brothers. I got your back, I got your back. That's what the king is saying. You, my sister, I love you, I love you, I love you. I got your back, I got your back, right? So this is the king. So, and remember though, he's he's talking to his disciples. And I don't want you to get lost on this, okay? Because he's talking to his disciples. And the story is for a reason. They got to follow the storyline. And you got to remember he's talking to his disciples. And you got to know what his disciples did after he had passed away. They went out into the world to find and make more people uh, and disciples. And you are this person right now. You could be this person. You could be the disciple. And then with you being a disciple, you can be a part of the king and you can be comforted. You can have this blessing. You can be asking the father for whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. Now, but you understand he was talking to his disciples. So I encourage you to be a disciple. Someone that's a student, a steward who's learning, who's gaining knowledge in him and who's 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 following his steps in submissiveness. You're learning the father, you're learning the king and you're learning about them, studying yourself to be approved, you know. And then of course he's comforting them. Letting them know, hey, I got your back. I love you. I got your back. Um, this is what's going to happen. This, that, and the third. So so he was telling that to his disciples. So he wasn't just saying that to just anybody. Okay? So you got to know that part. He wasn't just saying all he said to just anybody. He His message is for believers, people who believe. You got to know that he's not just talking to everybody. He, if the only way he could be talking to everybody in the world is if everybody in the world believed in him, and that's not the case. Many are called, but few are chosen. So you, you are called. If you're sitting here listening to this video, you know you're called. This message is reaching you, and you are called. He's talking to you, and you have to know that he was talking to you. You are his disciples, and he got your back. He loves you, and he got your back. And you can, and you, you know, you gotta learn to be a disciple. You gotta make sure your actions are showing that um, you you can you can bear fruit to other people, right? You gotta bear fruit to other people. You gotta do stuff in the Father. You gotta work in Him. You gotta do your duties. You gotta wash the dishes. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta cut the grass. You got, you gotta go out in the world, and, and you gotta get that. You gotta get in that building, and you know what I'm saying, and flip those burgers in the spirit of the Father. Start doing stuff in Him, and whatever that is, that may be, just do that. Whatever you know, and go in and pray about it. Find out what you can do as far as duty. You know what I'm saying? You know, duty calls in the spirit of the, the spirit of the Most High God. So start finding work. Like do something. I encourage you. This is your. This is me. I'm giving you your orders right now. Go find work in the spirit of God. Go do some work in Him. All right. Don't just be someone who prays, right? Because He's talking to His disciples right here. In this whole passage, He's talking to His disciples. You know. So I'm trying to make you a disciple right now. Go do some work. Um. Go and meditate. Gain, get, get, get yourself sound judgment in the scriptures. Meditate, learn, gain information, gain knowledge, and get yourself sound judgment, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Make sure you get that. It's so important that you know that um, you can be a disciple. If you start doing that, you are his disciple. You immediately become a disciple when you start doing stuff like that. And then all you got to do now is just turn that, that hour into a week. That week into a month, that month into a year, that year into years. You are a disciple. Don't worry. You got it. You got this. If you're a believer and you know you want to go to the kingdom of Yah, just start doing this stuff. The king said in uh, John chapter 14, verse 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Now, um, that's it on that. I'm going to read 25 to... Let's see about 30. Let me see if I can do it to 25 to 30. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. No, the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I, that I came from the father. 
I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Yahushua, then Yahushua, then Yahushua's disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from Yah. All right, so... You know, the king, he all he did speak in a lot of parables and enigmas and figuratively. Um, you know, it was, I guess for some, it may have been hard to follow. And, um, but that right there um, was pretty plain. But I could see what, you know, how that could have been, you know, difficult. But yeah, you know, he always spoke in a way that, you know, that was hard for them to follow. So, you know, uh, the thing about the king is when you... Um, grow to a certain level, you begin to start, your understanding begins to follow you. You begin to have understanding. And I think this is what's happening right now. He's like graduating them. He's like, all right, you guys, it's time for you guys to know uh, the full truth and I'm going to reveal it to you. I'm going to, I'm going to, you guys are grown now. You guys are grown trees now. You guys are big and I'm going to reveal to you uh the information that you couldn't grasp before. And I'm going to tell you plainly. Because I feel like you're responsible enough not to know. I feel like I feel, I feel, I feel like you will honor me better now that you are, you are, you reached it. You made it this far. I feel like it's, it's time for you to know. It, it, I, I could count on you. I could trust on you. I can count on you because you made it this far. You showed yourself to be my disciple. Now I'm going to count on you. And I'm going to tell you things strongly so i mean straightly i'm going to tell you guys plain and simple and i'm not going to tell you like you were a child or nothing like that i'm going to just tell you plainly so that's the thing that when you become mature because you have a level of immaturity and maturity it's not like you don't know any better i mean it's not like you're not it's not like that you are unworthy it's just that you need to grow there's some information that you know you need to learn first before you learn the next. And that's pretty much what the king was doing. He was raising them up. Making them stronger here. Critical thinking. Their level of critical thinking had to be on a, on a high level up here. And you know. In the world. Pff, critical thinking even to this day is like way down here. Everyone is on a low critical thinking. Everybody is not on that. On the same playing, playing field. That's for sure. And then you know. Um. So the king, he felt like he, he, he you know, they, they were ready. And uh, it was time for them to know all the truth and the things that they needed to know. Um, so that, that, that right there brings me to the world today, though. Like I was saying, because the world we live in, it is so sad because the, the distractions of, of movies, video games, music, I mean, circular music, um... All the distractions is keeping everyone in the idle state of state, in the idle state, you know? No one is actually paying attention to God. And that's scary, but that's how Satan is tricking everybody. He's making everybody pay attention to everything else. And you can, you'll grow out of one thing and then find yourself on the next trend that's trending. And or the movie, music... Even uh, people, you know, saying there are certain things that being, that's being made with people, you know, uh, trending. And, you know, it could be sexual immorality or drugs, alcohol, just social gatherings. And, you know, these these all things are, are, are distractions. And um, it's so important that you know that you're supposed to be finding some time in your day to worship the Creator. And actually make your whole day about him, you know. And um, you got to set yourself apart from the world that we live in. And, you know, anyone that's a part of the world, he hates. You know, the, the father's angry with the wicked every day. And so you need to know these things. It's so important to save your soul from going to hell. You need to know this information. And you need to know just more than just praying to God. You got to do more than that. You know, you got to do more than saying, I know who God is. You got to call him by his real name. You notice if I, when I read, I'm saying Yahusha and Yah, because those are his real name. 
you want to say their real names, you know, and um, you wanna you wanna uh, understand from the real the real truth of the Bible, not the false narrative. And only way you're gonna get that is if you meditate on those laws, because it, it because it becomes your wisdom and your understanding, and you will be called a great and wise people. And um, cause the world you live in, it's it's upside down and it's it's living in a lawless way. And when you observe the commandments, you are able to like it's like you can see what's going on. So it becomes your under it becomes your wisdom. It becomes your understanding. So you know. It's so important that you know that. All right, so this is the last part, 31 to 33. Uh, do you now believe, Yahushua replied, a time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me alone, all alone, yet I am not alone, to my father is, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So like I said, that's pretty much because he's pretty much letting know that something's about to go down. He's about to die. And then, um, you know, they're about, to, they're about to scatter. And I know that probably went, like, we about to scatter? No way. And, um, but yeah, pretty much, you know, so the king is just letting them know it's important that you guys, uh, Still believe in me, even while these things are happening. And I'm going to bless you. Ask for whatever you want. Until now, you have not asked. I'm going to show you guys that I'm still going to be around. I'm going to be there for you. Just know I got your back. And so that's the same thing with you. Whatever you're going through, just study, learn, meditate, and pray. And just know that the Father has your back. He has your back. He got you. Okay, he loves you because you love the king the whole entire time while you was loving on the king, the creator was loving on you. You got to know that. And, and, and his grace is so great. His mercy is so awesome. He loves you so much. He wants to bless you. There's so much darkness around that and I know it might be hard for you to think, right? I know it might be difficult for you to realize how great you are as a person. And the thing you can do is start prophesying things, you know. I wouldn't go to nobody and say, what's about to happen? I don't mean prophesy like that. You know, but when Abraham was asking his servant to go and find his son Isaac a wife, he sent his servant and told him to go find me a wife for my son. Go to my people. Go to the land of my people. So the servant goes out and he goes and he and he and he's like he's a little worried because he's not gonna find he's not gonna find a wife for Isaac. He's this is his thoughts. He's worried. So you know what he did. Just like you're probably doing, you're worrying about your life. You're worrying about certain things. You know what this what the servant did? He prophesied to the father. And he didn't go before everybody prophesied. It was just like a little prophecy between him and the father. He said, look, Father Yah, let, let me go and run into a woman who can feed my horse, who can who can give my horse water. And who can give me water and, and feed my horse water. And let that be the one that will be Isaac's wife. He prophesied that. And guess what? Yah let it come to pass. Yeah. Hallelujah, right? Same thing with King David. Think about the book of Psalms. Psalms 91. Psalms 23. Man, listen. Those are, those are words of prophecy. And then Yah let it come to pass. That's the same thing for you. You can, you, if you're going to, let's say you're in your walk with the Father, 
and you and your walk with the king, and there's some things that you're worried about, some things that you're trying to overcome, some things that you that you feel like that you can't do. You can do it. Just start speaking things into existence, because your mouth, your tongue, uh, death and life is in the tongue. It's, it's in the power of the tongue, and you can speak death or life. And life is vast, so you can start talking anything on any level when it comes to life. So, just start saying what's going to happen, and it will happen, okay? You will see it happen. But when you start talking bad, you don't want that. You already know um, bad things begins to happen, all right? So, don't, don't prophesy bad things. Say good things. Speak about good things. Say good things is going to happen. I'm a blessed man today. I'm a blessed woman today. Uh, my day-to-day -day will be a blessed day. In the next couple of days, I should receive good news in the Father. I'm going to receive good tidings from the King. I'm going to receive good information. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to be a good, good, good son in the, in the Father. I'm going to be a good servant. Um, I'm going to be a good daughter. I'm going to be a good wife. I'm going to be a good husband. Um, I'm going to be an awesome I'm going to be an awesome brother. I'm going to be an awesome employee. Oh, I'm going to get this job. Oh, I'm going to make this money. I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I prophesy that I'm about to become a very successful um, entrepreneur, a very successful architect. Like, you just got to say stuff that you know that you are in line with in your life that you feel like that you can go out and go do. And then you want to say the stuff that is positive to yourself and definitely talk with the Father. Let Him know your plans, and He will establish you. And it says, I think, in fact, it does say in Proverbs 16, verse 3, it says, Trust in the Creator, and He will act, and He will establish your plans. Okay? So, it's, in, it's, in, it's important that you think positive. Speak positive things into existence. Right? So that was it for John chapter 16. And um, I hope this helped somebody. I hope something that I said helped you out. And and if it did, you know, maybe next time you can come in the comment and just say hallelujah. You ain't got to say nothing else. Just say hallelujah, you know. Or you can do, or you can do, or you can just go and pray about what you learned from the Father. That would be a big Big blessing. That's like one of the best, biggest things you can do. You know what I'm saying for me. You can say, "Hey, Father Yah, you know what? I listened to Chris, and he and I, I got, I received good, good wording from him. You know what I'm saying? All praises to to you, Father Yah, for what he said. Because now I got the fruit that I can go bear to myself and unto others. So you need to know that love is so important that you need to know that you need to know because. The world is getting cold. You need to put it into practice. Because the king did say, uh, in the end, will I find faith on the earth? So you need to know that you need to have love, okay? That's so important. You got to put it into practice today, though. Because if you, because if you, um, if, if, you're, if you're playing a basketball game, and you just started just before the tournament, the tournament next week, you're probably not going to be just as good as you should You should have been had you had practice a year ago. You know what I'm saying? So you got to put it into practice. Put love into practice, joy into practice, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because the place of tor torment is the opposite, and anyone who doesn't put this into practice is going to that place. So don't go to the place of torment, right? Practice all the fruits of the Spirit. Because people are unappreciative of those fruits. And people go to the place of torments, and guess what? The first thing they take away, they take away the love. They take away the joy. They take away the peace. They take away the patience. They take away the kindness. They take away the joy. They take away the self-control. Everything getting taken away. And then what happens next? Torment. Now you got no love in your heart to fight it off. Now you got no joy in your heart to fight it off. No, no sense of peace to fight it off. No hope to fight it off. You know, no self-control over yourself to fight it off. You need to have all those fruits of the Holy Spirit. 
and appreciate them while you're here and alive. And, you know, do yourself a favor, man. Repent every day. We ought to repent daily and then keep up with bearing fruit. So with that being said, and remember Yah is your helper. Always say that because the enemy don't like you knowing that who's your helper. Always say Yah is my helper. Say it with me. Yah is my helper. Okay? Yah is my helper. You know? With that being said, Shalom.